What's up, everybody? BG Braun here, president of Plaxon Labs. I have a special guest with me today for the first time in Boca, Jen Aguirre, for all of you who are pronouncing her name wrong, like myself. And uh, you, you got in yesterday, right? Yeah. So today is day one, and I figured why not start day one off as hard as possible with a really hard leg workout. And I know everyone comes here and does legs, and it might be getting old, so I wanted to spice things up a little bit, keeping it real also. After she competed, Jen told me she wanted to get into powerlifting, which I sort of talked her out of. However, powerlifting does have its place when utilized the right way. So we're gonna do what I'm gonna call a power bodybuilding workout today. We're only gonna do four exercises, squats, deadlifts, leg press, and lying hamstring curls. I'm gonna show you how you can take these four exercises and really, really, really put size on your legs as well as gain strength. We're gonna go deep into all of it. We're gonna see just how strong she is and I wanted to bring somebody extra strong and powerful in for this type of workout. So I think I found the right person. We'll, we'll find out though. Are you nervous? No. No, good. Cool. I didn't think so. All right, we're going to go get into it now. We're going to go uh, start with some squats, just see what we can get. I have no idea what she can do. I know she's strong. I've missed some of her strength videos. But today we're going to see for real. She's uh, dehydrated. She's on limited food because she did a photo shoot with Ryan Loco. So the, the odds are against her. I'm, try, I'm trying to me, psych her out. <laughs> Not good. Out. All right, we're gonna go into it and get into it, so we'll see what we can do today, guys. Perfect. Good for him. All right, so we're gonna do three warm-up sets. That first one was just with a quarter there. And we're gonna go very, very easy, and we're really focusing on range of motion. The form is perfect. We wanna get everything lubricated and ready to go for the heavy working sets now. We're gonna do a lot of working sets, so these warm-up sets, we don't want to be tiring out. We just wanna get everything prepared for the working sets. We're gonna progressively move up each set, and there's gonna be one back off set. So this is not like a pyramid where you're gonna go up and then come back down. We're gonna keep on going up and then we'll have that one back off set. I don't wanna fry her out with the back up sets and tie her out her back because we are going to be doing deadlifts after this. You notice that she's squatting barefoot. For a while, people trained barefoot, and they got away from it, and now they developed all these different squat shoes, and the Vibram came out with the shoes that were basically barefoot. You get a better grip on the ground that way. There are people that debate that you should have some arch support when you squat. Olympic lifters actually have a flat sole to their shoes, but it's actually angled like this. They almost feel like wood. I wouldn't suggest squatting in something that's got a cushy sole like Yeezy, um, but I'm not against squatting barefoot either. I squat in shoes, but I actually squat <laughs> these, which you see a lot of uh, power lifters will squat in trucks, which is as close to being barefoot as possible. You just have a little bit of a support between you and the ground. This is working set number one now. We're thoroughly warmed up. We're gonna do eight reps. She can do way more than this, but we're progressively working up. So we're going for six reps with this. Should be no problem at all. Okay. Good. 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 Come on. One more. Easy. Very good. Four to six is our range now for these next two sets, but I think you can get five, I got you. Okay. Come on. 
Martin Tyler, you got this. Come on. Right up. Good. Come on. Up. Come on. Come on. Up. Take your time. Come on. Up. A little deeper on this one. Come on. Okay. Come on. Good. Walk it in. Good. Shit. You're thinking about it a lot. Yes. This is our last heavier set. <clears throat> Don't think about it so much this time. Just take deep breaths. Go down. You can rest at the top longer if you need to. Right up. There you go. Come on. Just like that on Right back up. Good. Come on. Up. Don't think so much. Just come down and up. Up. Give me one more. Come on. All the way down. Drive. There you go. Walk it in. Good. So I know you guys, when you watch me do all my volume based stuff, we move very, very fast. We're actually moving at a pretty fast pace here. This is actually faster than I would really recommend. You know, but we're, we're sharing the platform and being courteous. And in the gym, you're gonna have to do that at times. If you have the option, and you're doing these really, really heavy weights, take as long as you need to be ready to go. When you're training for strength and power, you wanna be rushing your way through it. Take all the time that you need and make sure you have everything going into these sets and that your form is gonna be perfect. Cut these a little bit, but we're still hitting a lot of quad, we're hitting a lot of glute. Some of the, the true power for people will be like, oh, those, those last couple reps weren't deep enough. To me, they're, they're working everything that, that we, I want her to work. She's controlling the weight on the negatives a lot. Some of you guys just dive. So doing it the way that she is, she's a true bodybuilder. You can see she's feeling the reps all the way. When you get into moving heavy weight like that, you don't want to just go crazy throwing the weight around because a lot can go wrong. So take your time. Warm up the right way, take breaks in between sets, and don't sacrifice your form for the sake of moving the weight. And now, we're gonna go back to what we started with. And we started with 155, we did eight reps. What's gonna be different on this set is now that she's done everything, we're gonna go to failure. I'm gonna determine when her failure point is. We're gonna see how many we can get with that starting weight. And this is when you make a weight that was possibly easy in the beginning feel heavier because of how much workload that we did, but since it's so much lighter on her back, it should feel like a feather compared to all the real heavy stuff that we did. Good. 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 Come on. Nice. Come on. Easy, keep going. Keep it going, come on. You got plenty more, come on. Way more, come on. Keep it going, you got a lot more. There you go, we're not even slowing down yet, come on. Another one, come on. Keep going, come on, come on. Another one, come on. Another one. You got more. Come on. Come on. Up. You got two more. No problem. I know you do. Come on. Up. Yeah, another one. Come on. Come on. Give me one more. Come on. Come on. Drive it up. Good job. Now you're walking in. Very good. So, if I was counting properly, that was 21 reps, which is very, very good. I was hoping for 15, that's why I told her 12. Um, normally, you're probably not gonna go that hard by yourself. You're gonna need a good spotter to take you that far. Your mind will psych yourself out. She probably, with me spotting her, could have grinded out maybe, I would say, two to four or five more reps, but I don't want her to, to completely annihilate her back because now we're gonna deadlift. So we're gonna let her catch her breath for a little bit. And then we're gonna actually move into sumo deadlifts to start. 
All right, so now we're thoroughly warmed up. So you don't have to go through the amount of warm-up sets that you would normally have to do when you're starting out with a deadlift. We don't want to go crazy because our back is already warm. So we're going to do three sets of conventional stance like deadlifts, which are going to still work her quads a lot, especially with how much she's done. Going to work the hams, of course, the glutes. And then we're going to go into some sumo deadlifts. So we're actually going to do three sets of each. But we're going to go harder on the conventional, and when she's completely warmed up, we're going to focus more on perfect form for the sumos. We don't want to fry out her back too much and get the hips all the way warmed up. They should be warm from the amount of squats that we've done. And this is a workout that is aggressive on the back. So you're going to want to really back off after a workout like this. Even taking a day off actually is not a bad idea. You know, de-stress de your body. But today we're going all out. sets of 10 conventional deadlifts when it's heaviest in the last set. It's very difficult to do this after squat. However, it can be done. Now we're going to move to sumo deadlifts, okay? And sumo deadlifts is a lot more hip, so you need a lot of glute involved in this. It's a much different type of exercise, okay? It's typically going to be a little slower off the ground and it'll move a little faster as we get up. This is going to really, really help you with your powerlifting style squat, okay? So from a bodybuilding perspective, if I had to pick one or the other, as far as putting muscle on the body, the regular conventional deadlift is gonna be the one that I'm gonna pick. However, the sumo deadlift has its place. I'm more of a fan of the dumbbell plie squat for actually toning and sculpting and working on the glutes, but the sumo deadlift is a similar range of motion when done the correct way, it's gonna work the area the same way, it has its place in a powerlifting program a lot more. So now that she's warmed up, we're gonna move into some heavier sumo deadlifts. You got that on camera, didn't you? <laughs>
Very good. Last set of these. Come on. Nice deep breath. Come on. fun stuff so we've done a lot of power but I always want to incorporate my traditional bodybuilding style stuff in so the very basic machines the leg press you've seen me do this a hundred thousand times probably at this point over the years we've done all this power stuff now that the muscles are really fatigued we're gonna get the volume going in and force blood flow into the area we're gonna play around with some foot placement on here uh, but Jen does want to bring up her legs overall. So we're gonna focus on different points, different parts of the leg with different foot positioning. So this first one, we're gonna put our feet all the way together like this. We're gonna concentrate on keeping our knees together too. For this one, you're gonna come down about 90 degrees. All right? You don't let your knees come apart. So when you're coming down like this, you're gonna have a tendency as you get tired, right? To want to let your knees go out. We don't want that to happen. Sometimes what I'll have people do is actually put a ball in here even and squeeze it. We're gonna focus on keeping the knees in to about 90 degrees and then pushing back up. We're not locking our knees out either. So it's a nice, good rhythm. All right, here we go. What am I going for? Until I said it's time. Okay. Those knees in. Perfect. Get a little more rhythmic with it and don't lock the knees out. Just come right back down when you get up to that point. Right back down now. There you go. Good. Keep that constant tension on like that. That's what I want. There you go. Good. Come on. Good. Come on. Good. Good. Keep going. Let's do four, three, two, one. Come on. Come on. Good job. Awesome. Very good. Okay, now on this next set, what we're going to do, we're going to go all the way out now. We're going to take a nice wide stance. This is going to be more similar to what we were doing with the squats and the sumo deadlifts. So when you do these, now the opposite, we're going to let our knees come all the way out like this, out to the sides of our body, and we're pushing through the heels back up again. This looks hard. I already did legs earlier today, so I'm a little shaky. But again, our knees are coming out, all the way down nice and deep, and then driving back up again, okay? This foot placement is key for stimulating these different areas. Now that she's so fatigued, she's gonna feel this a lot in her hams and glutes. So now we're going all the way out. Letting your knees come out, driving through your heels. dealer's choice, wherever she wants to put her feet, where she feels the most comfortable and she feels the strongest, that's where she's gonna go on this set. So we focused on all the way in, all the way out, now we're gonna go where she's most comfortable, which is probably around a shoulder width, which is what most people are gonna do. 
on a leg press. I'm gonna let her catch her breath first. I'm gonna go a little heavier because when you put your feet where you're used to putting them, you're gonna be a little stronger than when you're starting to mess around in different positions. Now we're gonna we're gonna put a little weight on and see where she's at. She's done a lot of heavy stuff already. Okay. Do you want me to know a number or no? Nope. Just okay. But put your feet where you feel comfortable. Okay. Where you feel you're gonna be the strongest. Come on. Three more. Two more. Two more. Good job. This last set is a drop set. All right, this is the final set here. Again, she's gonna put her feet placement where she wants, and we're gonna really, really push through failure now. And we're gonna do a triple drop set. I have assistant over here to help me on the other side, so I don't have to run around and take the plates off. And this is something that you want your spotter or person that's helping take the weights off to know how to really push you beyond failure. Otherwise, you're just gonna give up before you really get to that point. And this is the last set of true quad work today, so we wanna make sure we really, really annihilate this muscle. This is what you do in this workout to really make yourself grow. You've gotta fully destroy the muscle when you train like this. This is not a volume-based stimulate the muscle. This is an annihilation workout. And that's what we're gonna do now to finish it off. Falling down. More. More. Come on. Keep going. Come on. This is what's gonna make you grow now. Come on. More. More. I want five more good reps. Don't pause at the top. Just give me five in a row. Let's go. That's five. Four. Three. I got two. Two. Come on. Down and up. Good job. Yeah. Awesome. You can let her out. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. You thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. Awesome, sir. I would help, but I'm not going to. Rest. That's how you do it. See, the last one, I was pulling them up. That's what you want. You want somebody that's going to know how to keep you moving, but not actually kill you. When I say that we're going to kill her, I don't want her to get hurt. It's the last thing I want. And I always ask my athletes when we're training, is anything hurting? Am I hurting you? I don't ever want to hurt somebody. Sometimes trainers, I watch these trainers, well, I watch trainers not do anything with their clients too, but I also see trainers that are like, I'm going to kill this person today. It's not what it's all about. It's not how you get better. You got to know, you have to pay attention and know when a muscle can go and when it can't. Your muscle doesn't know what eight is or what 15 is. It just knows when it can't fire anymore. We got one exercise left. Okay. I'm gonna show you how to make a lying hamstring curl really hard though. That's the fun thing. Oh my god. Okay. 
I gotta, I gotta wipe down the machine. Okay. okay. You gotta wipe down the machine. We're doing 10 reps. Come up fast and just control your negative. There you go. Come on. Good. 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 Four. Three. Two more. Go real slow on these negatives. Slow, 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 slow. Up fast. Control this one. Slow, slow, slow. And rest. All right, so we're finishing off. She's fried right now, but I want to really finish off her hamstrings just to complete everything that we've done. Because we've we've hit everything. We've hit glutes. We've hit a lot of quad. We have hit hams, of course, with the squats, but now I want to finish this off. So we're not going to go too deep with the volume. We're only doing three sets. So that set, we did a controlled set of 10 with some slow negatives. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do two drop sets where she's going to do a hard set of eight, and I'm going to cut it down, and she's going to rep out, rep out, rep out with strict form. We're going to really finish this muscle off now. We're going to do that twice. This first one, we're going to do one drop set. Second one, we're going to go for three total like we did over there in the leg press. All right, here's the deal. She just ran into the bathroom. I do think that she's gonna throw up. Now guys, you don't wanna throw up when you do legs. We've all done it. I haven't done it in years because you don't wanna lose all those nutrients. Um, but we've all done it before. We've all pushed ourselves that hard that we've thrown up. Now here's the deal. She's done a lot already. She's also dehydrated, which I don't necessarily think is a, is a horrible idea, but it's definitely not a good idea. You did not? Nope. All right, because if you did, we're done. I don't want you dehydrating anymore. Nope, I didn't. All right, so she did not throw up. So we are going to finish this one last set. It's just one set. At this point, would it make or break you? No. It will conclude what I wanted to do in this workout. If you get to the point, guys, where you puke in your workout, stop. You already lost your nutrients. You're dehydrated. Your body is just, like, had enough. Now, sometimes I will give you a, a, a variable that... I think that you have to use your better judgment on. Sometimes if you're doing legs and you just eat too close to the workout and you're not done digesting properly, it can sit in your stomach. I've done that before. This is why I actually, well now I train fasted, but in the old days, I could eat and then train any body part, except for legs. I actually usually waited about 90 minutes, sometimes two hours after my last meal before I would train legs. I prefer to train them on an empty stomach so you wouldn't get nauseous like this or feel sluggish. Some of you guys can do it. I don't recommend it. So. When she's ready, we're gonna do this last set. It's gonna be a hard one. Hopefully this one she doesn't actually puke. Um, and then we'll conclude the video. And I will start adding in the workouts um, in the description. By the way, Eric, you're the man who does all that stuff. Easy fix. Wait, she might be puking. She's tough and she's trying to power through, which I don't really want her to do at this point. <laughs> Although we do think it's funny. It isn't funny, it is, but it isn't. We've had some memorable pukes. Over the years, Cody Montgomery, Jason Genova had a little I issue back in the old days. Who else has puked? Cody like four times. Cody pukes a lot. He's a puker though, Cody. Um, we don't want you guys to puke. If you're going to puke on any day, it's going to be leg day though. She did throw up a little bit, but she feels that she only threw up her pre workout. So against my will, I'm going to allow her to do this last set, she's an adult, it's her decision. I don't think anything bad is gonna happen to her. Hopefully she doesn't throw up worse now because of this. But we're gonna finish it out then. All right, so I'm gonna still push you then the same way I was going to. Okay. All right, so we're gonna do seven reps with this weight. Okay. Seven good reps. One, come on. Two, three, come on. One more. Down. All right, let's go for seven again. Come on. Two. Three. Four. Very good. Two more. One more. Seven. Rep it out. Come on. Good. Good. 
Keep it going. Come on. Keep going. There you go. Come on. Good. Good. Come on. Good. Keep going. Very good. Come on. You got more. You need one more than some slow negatives. Nice and slow. Control it. Control it. Control it. Control it. I'm going to help you back up. Control this negative now. Control. I'm going to help you back up again. Up. Control this. We do one more. I'm going to help you back up. Control this negative. Slow. 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 And you're done. Very good job. Awesome. Good. I think to keep it as real as possible, normally do our fancy close out videos, but we'll just get it right in the moment. How are you feeling? Not, not fancy at all. I feel good. Um, uh, <laughs> but I feel good. And my legs feel ginormous. They look ginormous yeah. right now. They a lot of blood in there. We'll see how the story are tomorrow, but we're going to focus on uh, recovery now. We're going to go to cryotherapy, which is the perfect time to do cryotherapy. It's probably going to cut down on her recovery quite a bit. Still gonna be sore tomorrow, but this is probably gonna take a day off, at least of her recovery time. This is a key, key, key time. If you're only gonna do cryo two or three times a week, or even if you're gonna do it once a week, do it after your hardest day, guys. And I will uh, start putting some food back in her body since she's starved and dehydrated herself for this. Not optimal situations to train that hard. Definitely one of the harder leg workouts we've done. It's hard to say if it was the hardest ever because we've had a lot of hard ones over the years, but this was definitely a, definitely a hard one. I know I wouldn't want to do this workout, nor do I think I could do this workout with my old bones the way they are. Um, do you have any, any closing words? Thank, thank you. <laughs> a thank you for a beating. For death by PJ. So that was power bodybuilding, guys. This is a fun one. We never do stuff like this. A lot of squats, a lot of deadlifts. You guys don't see a lot of those in our videos. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Found the perfect subject for this. And for Jen, I'm the boss. Peace out, bye.